The title of this film is not very subtle, but it does get the job done, so let's talk about it. Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about another Walter Hill film, directed film, and that film is Bullet to the Head. This is the only film that Walter Hill and Sylvester Stallone ever teamed up on. This movie came out February 1st of 2012. It's rated R. It's an hour and 32 minutes long. Had a budget of $45 million. Sadly, upon release, it only grossed 9 in America and 21.9 worldwide. So yes, this movie was a bomb for Stallone, unfortunately. And Stallone had two movies coming off that year. Stallone was coming off of the hit that was The Expendables in 2010. And later this year, in 2012, he had The Expendables 2 in August, which went on to be a hit. Um, so this was kind of film in between there that didn't do very well, unfortunately. Although I do like this film, we'll get into it. Um, originally, Walter Hill was not the director. Wayne Kramer was the original director of the film. And a matter of fact, um, Thomas Jane was a part of the cast when, when Wayne Kramer was um, still director. And he was going to play the role that ended up going to Sun Kang, or Sun Kang, I think I'm saying that right, um, who ended up playing Taylor Kwan in the film. Um, Thomas Jane was going to play that character. Obviously, the last name was going to be Kwan. But when Wayne Cr Kramer left... Thomas Jane said to Stallone, we should get Walter Hill to direct it. Walter Hill just had a film drop or fall out, and he, Sylvester Stallone approached him, and he said he'd do it. But unfortunately for Thomas Jane, I think Thomas Jane would have been really great in the role, because I like Thomas Jane as an actor, but when uh, Joel Silver became a producer on the film, and they got rid of Thomas Jane and brought Sung Kang on as Taylor Kwan, that character that plays off of Stallone. And that's how Thomas Jane ended up not being in the film, unfortunately, but... We'll, we'll go down to cast here. Sylvester Stallone plays Jimmy Bobo. He's his hitman in New Orleans. Um, Jason Momoa is in this film, and he's our main bad guy. He's our main mercenary, but he's definitely the main bad guy. He plays Keegan in the film. Christian Slater, in his first theatrical film that year since Alone in the Dark, which is a terrible film that came out in 2005, he plays um, Baptiste. He's this lawyer for this guy who's trying to buy this real estate deal he's trying to get to go through. Sung Kang's in here, uh, and he was hot off a of Fast and Furious franchise. He plays Taylor Kwan. And Brian Van Holt plays a small role in this film, which is always good to see Brian Van Holt show up in a film. And when Walter Hill came on, Stallone and Walter Hill did some uncredited rewrites on this film. Basically, this film is takes place in New Orleans. Stallone is his hitman. He has a partner hitman. They go and they, they have a hit out on this guy. They're paid to kill this ex-cop out of D.C., who has some dirt on this um, real estate developer who's already been kicked out of other countries for shady dealings, and they're hired to go kill him, and they do go kill him. And they go to a bar to celebrate afterwards and get paid by Ryan Van Holt's character who's supposed to, who's, who's hired them and offered him so much money. Well, he never shows up, but Keegan does, Jason Momoa, and Jason Momoa is fantastic as the main bad guy in this film. He shows up and kills the one hitman uh, Stallone's partner and Stallone is in the bathroom or Jimmy Bobo and Jason Momoa comes in we get our first fight between them two and still uh Jimmy Bobo fights off Keegan and Keegan takes off and this sets forward our plot um soon after this we're introduced to Taylor Kwan he's from DC he was a partner with the guy that Jimmy Bobo and his partner killed in the hotel room or ex-partner and he's there to investigate because the, his police department knows that he was dirty, a dirty cop. And he wants to see what's going on. But right away, he's met from resistance from the New Orleans PD. And we come to find out there's a lot of dirty cops on the payroll of this um, real estate mogul. And we come to find out that the reason Keegan went to try to kill Jimmy Bowen and his partner was they're trying to cover up any tracks. Because they were looking for information that, the, that he had had against them so they can have a project that they're planning on doing in the city of New Orleans worth a lot of money. And Christian Slater's his lawyer, and, they're, and they realize they have to get Christian Slater's character to find out more information. So they infiltrate this party at Christian Slater's house, his big old, style house, old school house in New Orleans, and it's a costume party, and they get him out. And they get the information they need off of him in a flash drive, Keegan shows up with a bunch of the hit squad, but Jimmy Bobo has a place wired with plastic explosives, blows the place up, kills everybody except Keegan, and Keegan's pissed now because these, these were his men. Because he was in the military doing other things overseas for a long time. They, they go into it a little bit during the film. And basically at the end of the film, they kidnap Jimmy Bobo's daughter. 
they want the, the flash drive and they end up at this old power plant in New Orleans and we have our last battle. Keegan kills everybody on his side of the fence because he realizes they're screwing him and he has his last showdown with Jimmy Bobo with an axe fight, which is awesome, by the way. And they end up killing Keegan. Taylor Kwan uh, ends up going on his way, and Jimmy Bobo goes on his way, and that's the end of the film. This movie is only an hour and 32 minutes long. It, it goes very fast, and it's very streamlined. It's a very 80s-style action film, for sure. It's based off of a graphic, no a French graphic novel. I've never read it, but I know it's based off of that. Um, it's very violent. I mean, the this title of the film is Bullet to the Head, and there's lots of bullets to the head in this film. It's very violent. Um, it's funny. There's some funny parts as well. Jason Momoa plays a great bad guy off of Stallone's good guy, although Stallone's character is not really a good guy. He's kind of an anti-hero kind of guy. And it's a, it's a fun movie. Is it perfect? No, it's not Stallone's best action film, but it's definitely not his worst. I would give Bullet to the Head a 7 out of 10. I think it's fun. I've always enjoyed this film. I saw it in the theaters back in 2012. It's not the greatest thing ever. It's not, it doesn't reinvent the wheel here. Walter Hill directs it nicely. The action is nicely directed. And the acting's good. Um, Stallone's always likable, even when he's playing gruff and, and anti-hero type. I really like I liked this film. It's fun. It's a fun R-rated action film. I give it a 7 out of 10. What are your thoughts on this film? Leave a comment down below. Let me know. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Share this video. I greatly appreciate it. I'm going to do another Walter Hill film for my next review, my last one of the week. I'm going to do Last Man Standing with Bruce Willis, so be on the lookout for that later in the week. I hope everyone's doing well out there. Stay safe, and I'll be back soon with Last Man Standing. Thanks. Bye.